Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, I'll be showing you a file sharing uh, self hosted app that you can run, which is PSI Transfer. So, if you're looking for, you know, being able to transfer files or share files across, you know, people this is a great one where you don't have to actually create an account for it you can just upload a file get a unique link set things like a retention period of how long this file can be downloaded for or even password protect the file so that essentially they can they have to enter a password to be able to download files from the app so we'll show you how you can set it up um we'll upload a file and show you kind of the settings that you can do with it so let's get started All right, so first thing with this, what we need to do is set up a new server so that we can essentially run it. Um, so the thing that we'll do here is uh, create a DNS entry for our home lab um, that will essentially say, hey, PSI transfer will resolve to an IP address. This is useful because first, first off, actual domain names are significantly better than typing in or trying to remember an IP, um, PSI transfer, and uh, Honestly, if I had to remember like half of the things that I created here, I could tell you I would not remember half the things I created here and what IP they're associated with. Um, so that's why uh, domain names are great. So we'll add this to here. So we, we edited the serial number so that it knows that this config has changed. And then we added the entry here, which will be 162, which is just the next iteration of the IP. So we'll add PSI transfer and commit that. The other thing that we'll need to do is add it to our Ansible Playbooks inventory file so that when we run our server setup stuff with Ansible in AWX, it knows that, hey, this is a new host that we want to essentially create. So we will hit inventory and we'll just add it. And this is just a list of essentially host names in this case um, that we will use it for. So PSI transfer, transfer. And then we'll add it to here, add PSI transfer. And then we're essentially good with all the repository stuff for uh, creating the backend things that we need for our server setup, which is great. Um, so after that, what we can do is go to our AWX instance. And this is essentially just kind of a front end GUI for running Ansible playbooks. And it's really nice because you can schedule things uh, and do other things so that you don't have to run Ansible commands on like a Linux box so that you can just run it through here. Um, if you're interested in how uh, AW, how to install AWX, I do have a video um, that you can check out in my home lab series about AWX. So go feel free to check that out because I know a few people have asked. We I do actually have a video. So um, it's pretty simple and we just use a K3S cluster, um, which is just a single node like Kubernetes cluster. So nothing too fancy. Everything's pretty, pretty self uh, um, contained in one VM. So, but what we can do here is we can see jobs. We can see that the project, uh, finish updating and the inventory is syncing now, which is kicked off from my GitLab pipeline. But what we can do here is in your templates, we have a workflow job template, um, that you can run that will essentially do all these, run all these templates sequentially. Um, if the previous uh, job template succeeded. So in this case, we'll first start off with creating a new VM, which will create a VM um, in my Proxmox cluster in my home lab. We'll patch it, so we'll log in, patch it. We'll start Docker and Docker Compose, which we'll need Docker for this because we'll be running the Docker version of it, which makes it super easy because then you can run it on any essentially distro. Um, I'm personally using Oracle Linux, but you can run it on Debian, uh, Ubuntu, CentOS, whatever you're running because we're using Docker. So as long as you have install Docker, you're pretty much good for this installation. Then we got certs and nginx. So with the certs, I have a step CA that will essentially, cr we'll create local certs um, on it. And then we will put those certs and use it with nginx on it. So we have TLS um, that will work. So what we'll do is launch this workflow. It'll prompt me for a few um, survey questions, which essentially will be what, you know, we I variableized in my playbooks. So in this case, the host name will be PSI transfer. The IP will be the 162, 1 .162. The VM name is whatever I want it in Proxmox, so I just use Dragon just to differentiate um, my home lab versus my video content. And then the proxy address. So the proxy address is whatever PSI will be running on. So let's look up PSI transfer GitHub real quick. 
and we will take a look at their GitHub. So we can see down here, the quick start is running it. It will run on 3000 because that's what's allocated. So we use 3000, that's pretty default. Um, 3000, 8080, like those are pretty default what most people would use. So we'll be doing HTTPS or HTTP localhost 3000. So essentially Nginx will, will proxy pass to this address running. We hit next and then we'll hit launch. So after hitting launch, essentially it will run through each playbook um, and th this will take a few minutes. So we will resume the video once it's finished, but it will run through each playbook, do all the steps in the playbooks so that it essentially creates it. And all we need to do is do the final touches of using the GitLab uh, GitHub repository and getting this Docker to essentially kick off and any environment stuff that we need to set up. So let's uh, wait for this to finish and then we will finish the rest of the setup. All right, now that it has finished creating the VM, what we can do is essentially SSH into it. So we can SSH to PSI transfer dragon local. We'll type in the password. And now we have an SSH problem. So we can do like a Docker PS, we can see Docker is installed. So what we want to do is go back to the GitHub. We can see that essentially there are two commands to run, um, the Docker run command, and then we need to update uh, the directory um, permissions so that it matches what needs to what it needs to be. So we'll make a script, we'll call it start docker.sh. We'll do bin bash just for the prompt and we will paste this in. So we can take a look um, at this uh, and we'll actually need to remove the dollar signs in front. And then we can take a look. Um, so we want to add the hyphen D for detached mode. The port will work on 3000. We got the admin pass as secret. You probably want to update that. Don't leave it as secret. Um, the volume will mount um, based off of what it is there, and then it will run the container. So there, so the two things that you want to add is hyphen D for detach so that it just doesn't run your console, and then you'll want to update the admin password. After that, what you can do is chmod plus x start docker so that dot the bash script that we created is executable so that you can run it. And then we'll run a start docker. So it will run the first command, which will essentially pull the docker container, run it, uh, with the variables that we put and then mount the volumes that it needs. And then the second command will essentially make it so that the permissions of that volume uh, of the directory is correct. So now that this has started, we can go to the browser and type HTTPS because we have the step CA plus Nginx configured for it to work. Um, otherwise you would have to do HTTP and then the URL at, at 3000 uh, if you didn't do the HTTPS stuff. So, but we did. So we do HTTPS PSI transfer dot dragon dot local. And you can see you get a pretty simple um, page here. So you kind of got a few settings over here. So you got the retention on how many, how long this file can, will exist for, for someone to be able to download if they have the link. So you can do one time download and up to eight weeks is essentially the, the gist. Then you have your password, which is optional. So if you don't set a password, that means anyone who has a link can download it. If you set a password, they after clicking the link, they would need to enter the password. So we'll show that with it. So essentially what we'll do is do the one-time download with the password that we'll just say is password. We also, then we can, what we can do here is drop files. So we can select the files that we want um, in here and then we hit upload. So after uploading, it will give you a, a URL, which is a custom URL with the link of just those, this list of files that I got. So if I were to say, for example, copy this link and paste it, you can see it'll prompt me for the password because I specified the password. So which was password. And then here you can see that the file is over here. We can download it as a zip. We can download it as a tar GZ, or you can click on it and it'll just download itself. Um, but because I did one time download, if I were to refresh it, it will essentially say, hey, it's not found anymore because it was a one-time download. Now, say for example, you wanted um, to do the same thing, but you didn't want a password and you want like a retention of like six hours, right? So then you can go to it. You see that the file is there, didn't prompt for a password. And if you reload the page, you essentially can download it as many times as you want, um, uh, you know, until it expires in six hours. So. 
Yeah, so that's pretty much it for a PSI transfer. It's pretty simple, especially if you need to set up something really quick because someone can't access something via Google uh, Drive or Dropbox because sometimes those are blocked um, based off company policies. Um, but you can set this up very quick to set up so that someone you can drop files in for someone else to grab. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.